And welcome back to Power Lunch. Well, joining us now in the studio from the audit conference uh, currently taking place is uh, Jacques Van Veek. He's a corporate forensic partner at Nconki. Hi, Jacques. You've got this big Nconki conference on. I think it's had uh, several years of uh, record, this very valuable conference. Uh, what are the trends that are emerging in fraud? Uh, one thinks certainly of all the technology that's available. You've got to be really up to date. Thank you very much for the opportunity. This is the fourth year that the conference uh, for audit committees are running. And uh, uh, international research and surveys have shown that uh, corruption and bribery is the fastest growing economic crime in South Africa. And there are two very specific trends that we're seeing in South Africa. One is that the level within organizations that are involved in these economic crimes are uh, increasing. So we have senior people in organizations that can get, uh, get involved. And secondly is that cybercrime is having a much bigger impact. Uh, on, uh, on economic crime because it's more organized mm. and are now a business versus an opportunity attack of disabling websites. So those two are very important to now, note. What always interests me is that uh, there's some very clever people doing this, but I suppose the criminals are clever as well. So you're wanting a foolproof way to get ahead of the criminals, but that doesn't appear to happen. You've, you've got to keep coming up with new ways. Absolutely. Uh, Crime is a business. You know, as we run businesses, we report on shareholding and value. It's a business for them. And it's a never-ending cycle. So policies, procedures, controls must be continually updated. Because you have IT coming in the mix, your internal audit, for instance, cannot be a standalone environment. It needs to work with IT to fight that. Uh, just to give a simple example, when the color printer was introduced People would forge very crudely. Mm. Now, people, instead of forging a degree, will buy a legitimate degree from a university where it's logged on the system as a degree. So you cannot go face value anymore because the IT environment has enabled the criminals to be organized and to be appearing to be legitimate. So that really push-ups the bar for us as yeah. forensic investigators to be a lot more holistic in our approach in investigating this and, and fighting this in order for the companies to stay at least of not ahead to at least stay on par yeah. with what's out there happening. And you have a lag of legislation. So sometimes the criminals are five steps ahead yeah. and uh, we need to play catch up the whole time. What about the costs of doing this? And I would think sometimes the chief financial officer says, hey, you guys are taking more resources here, <laughs> but you need them. It's absolutely, you're working with specialists. Uh, the teams have evolved from just being auditors. Now you have auditors, accountants, investigators, very uh, high level uh, law specialists, IT specialists, data analyst specialists. So the cost is huge. But on the other side, if you are not proactive, the repra uh, reputational risk of not protecting your client information, uh, being involved in some form of scandal. Um, and there's, so there's a huge cost to the company. But all it's doing is it's pushing up the cost of doing business for organizations. What about government and private sector? Uh, one senses and one has heard that uh, the government private audit capacity in government departments has been uh, wanting. Is that still the case? I think the Auditor General and his office are making great effort with National Treasury to capacitate, to create the skill sets within government. Um, and Because a lot of fraud between the private sector. Of course it takes two sides to it do it. It takes two sides. You know, uh, you, know you must be willing parties. You must be willing yeah. parties. So it is a never ending cycle. And it is not just one sector. Uh, it's easy, I think, government is always in the news. It's uh, very prevalent. So we perceive that government is the problem. It's not, like you correctly mm. pointed out, I must be there, you must be there, and we must be willing. Mm. There must be a meeting of minds uh, to, to act and, mm. and, and, and cause financial harm. So, Final point, point there, Jacques. A um, uh, lot of uh, noise going around uh, Pravin Gordon and local government and trying to get the... He said he wants a certain target of clean audits, uh, which hasn't happened for most municipalities. The trouble is, it's necessary to have a clean audit, but it's by no means sufficient. A clean audit, an unqualified audit, only means that. It doesn't mean you're delivering. It, uh, an audit, you correct in that sense, is an audit looks at a limited area. And you can go through documents, present it to you, the sample you take, and present a clean audit 
and there might be a major weakness in mm. controls, might be a major fraud, major... So it just says that what the auditor has inspected mm. and looked at, in his or her opinion, it's a fair representation. Which is not quite the same thing. That's uh, Jacques van Weyck, uh, corporate forensic partner at uh, Nkonki. Well, we move from that uh, to Stanley Labello, who is uh, the NUM Highfelt Regional Secretary, and uh, that's in connection with the strike that's on at the moment. Uh, Stanley. Uh